Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for 45 minutes to PCI Compliance in the Cloud. Now I'd like to introduce you to our speakers today. We have Bruno Kurtik, who is the founding VP of Product and Strategy at Sumo Logic. And from Cloud Passage, we have co-founder and CEO, Carson Sweet. And with that, let's get started. Carson, take it away. Sheila, thanks very much. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining this morning to begin with. Uh, we're very excited to have folks here and look forward to the questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, a little bit about what today's webinar is about. Uh, so if you're here at this presentation today, uh, you do care about PCI and there's probably some cloud component uh, that, that you're focused on. Uh, you need to know the new parameters for how to succeed with PCI in cloud environments. Many folks have been successful with PCI compliance in more traditional environments, uh, but as cloud evolves, as companies are starting to move to these environments, there are some new parameters and new approaches that need to be taken to be able to achieve PCI. So we're going to talk about those today, uh, how cloud environments make things different. The other thing we're going to discuss, uh, along with Bruno, uh, we're going to go through some details on how big data, uh, cloud power automation can actually turn cloud into an advantage for you. Solutions that are cloud native solutions that are built on top of cloud technologies that are intended uh, specifically to deal with security and compliance in cloud environments can make you much more successful with PCI. So a quick review of PCI, we don't want to spend a terrible amount of time on it, but for folks that may not be as familiar uh, with PCI as others, PCI is a standard uh, for security uh, and compliance for data security related to credit card information and personal identifying information in some cases. There are about a dozen high-level categories, uh, and these dozen high-level categories con contain about 200 specific control environments. Uh, some pertain to some environments, some pertain to others. Uh, typically, there's an annual audit that's conducted by a QSA, or Qualified Security Assessor, uh, who's anointed by the PCI Security Council. And that uh, auditor will come in uh, once a year and verify that your environment is actually in compliance with the control requirements uh, that you have to meet. This often includes a look back period in many cases, meaning they're not just going to look at the current state, but they'll look back over an operating period of six months to a year uh, to understand if you have been running in a compliant way for that period of time. Uh, a couple of quick things that we get questions on a lot. Uh, do I have to be PCI DSS v3 compliant today? Uh, the answer is in the wild right now, it's still very much V2. Uh, the, the final standards have not been released yet, and there's a one-year grace period uh, once they do get released. Uh, and the answer is yes, you can be PCI compliant when using uh, any cloud environment. Public cloud environment comes up often as a concern. Can we be PCI compliant there? Yes, you can be. Uh, we have dozens of customers who have become PCI compliant in the cloud. We ourselves are PCI compliant in a pure public cloud environment. The PCI requirements can be very complex and expensive, particularly depending on the, the level that you uh, have to achieve. Depending on the, the amount of transactions and credit cards that you run per year, and you can see the six million, one to six, and sub one million transactions per year, uh, the, the scope becomes much more broad and the, the audits uh, become much more intense. So typically a merchant uh, can pay an average of between 200 and 250,000 per audit each year, and that's for the actual audit fees themselves. Uh, there is a small number that are paying more than half a million per year uh, for audits. Out of organizations that are doing audits, about 2% fail those, uh, and that is, is a very big problem because then you have to repeat the audit or you have to repeat some portion of the audit. So one of the key things here is getting it right the first time and automating the audit process, automating data collection, automating data uh, analysis is very key to reducing the cost on these audits. A lot of the costs that you see here related to manual effort uh, with collecting and analyzing data. 54% of respondents, not surprisingly, say that PCI DSS is too expensive, uh, and most of those respondents are obviously on the larger end. Uh, and then over half of the respondents in, in this recent survey are not proactively managing data privacy. They're reacting to what the auditors do when the auditors come in. Uh, and, you know, anecdotally, we see a correlation between the organizations who are not proactively managing uh, security and compliance, monitoring PCI compliance uh, on an active basis, and those that are finding that costs increase. Uh, so this is sort of a, a set of key things to think about uh, in your cloud security strategy as you think through PCI compliance specifically. The other key thing to keep in mind is PCI does require 
ongoing effort. This isn't a one-time thing. Uh, once you do your initial control deployments, you've deployed the security requirements that PCI demands, uh, they are there, you've passed your first audit, you've established your compliance, these things need to be maintained ongoing, and that's very, very important. And a huge amount of data is necessary, and a huge amount of telemetry and automation is very beneficial in really detecting and responding to changes in environments. If you initially get compliant with any standard, and your environment never changes, then you have very little additional effort to do. So in that way, change really becomes the enemy of compliance and security. So it's very important to figure out how to efficiently manage, detect, uh, respond to, evaluate changes in an environment, verify that the controls that you've put in place for PCI compliant have not been impacted, or perhaps they need to be adjusted in some way to maintain compliance uh, so that when the next audit comes around, you're not reacting to you know, a huge number of deficiencies and things that you have to sort of go back and retool. These are the kinds of things that drive these costs up. So for environments where you have uh, you know, a very low rate of change, very, very simple. Cloud environments in particular drive a huge amount of change, huge high rate of change, uh, which is a net new problem for many security organizations to deal with, which is what makes the automation component very, very key. Uh, Bruno, I didn't know if you, you had, uh, I know this is an area that, that you've got loads of experience in as well. Wasn't sure if there was anything you wanted to add into uh, just the general PCI discussion and considerations as people start to think through how to strategize. No, uh, thanks, Carson. <clears throat> you covered it pretty well, but I think, you know, just to reiterate, you know, the, the, the rate of change is the enemy, and uh, as we will talk, you know, sub subsequently in these slides, we'll cover what kind of changes impact this, and, and it, it's a real, real challenge to make sure to capture all the changes, to evaluate them, to do them as quickly as possible so that you can be, uh, you can sort of avoid that out of compliance um, period that can actually hurt you during the um, assessment. And can also lead to fines. Uh, let's not forget that this is actually a compliance standard with teeth and uh, you can end up fined, it can end up paying a lot more for credit card transactions uh, than you may need to. Or yeah. lose your process, processing license. I'm sure that uh, Target, the, the, the team at Target would have tons to say about that. So, so let's talk a bit about cloud and what it is about cloud that creates complexity uh, around PCI. So from an infrastructure perspective, Cloud Passage, we focus very specifically on securing you know, infrastructure and application stacks, uh, the actual environments that run applications and workloads and so forth. And those environments used to be very static. Uh, they were, they were, there was virtualization, but primarily things were in the data center pretty slow. Infrastructure and cloud environments uh, are more distributed than, than they ever have been. So the actual components that are running applications are scattered, and it's the nature of a cloud application architecture to, to dis distribute things. It's on purpose, uh, and that's part of the benefit of cloud, geographic distribution, higher availability, and so on. Uh, the, the other big thing that changes with cloud is the rate of change. So as we talked about, change is the enemy of security and compliance. And when the rate of change goes through the roof, it creates a ton of new work, new effort, new points that need to be evaluated and responded to on the part of the security team. So if you think through you know, the way that rate of change used to be, uh, there were uh, waterfall software development life cycles, infrastructure was hardware based, uh, was very static, very slow. Uh, with the combination of agile development and now adding on software defined and cloud infrastructure, the rate of change in these application environments collectively have gone through the roof. And legacy security solutions uh, like perimeter based solutions, network IDS, network IPS, hardware appliances, none of those solutions are dynamic and none of those are distributable. They're very, very tied to physical environments. They're very tied to physical location. They're tied to a fixed controllable network topology they're fixed to a very deep level of visibility into a network environment. And when you look at cloud environments, not just public cloud, but also private cloud, those characteristics go away. So the actual technical ability to deploy security in a perimeter model or deploying security at the network level, actually having the controls live at layer three, layer four, becomes quite uh, problematic or impossible in cloud environments. And the other real key component to keep in mind, and this is really a new, very new set of issues, 
uh, there's a lot of new information and data that needs to be collected and integrated into your compliance system, and that has to do with your infrastructure as a service provider activities. Are they making changes to your environments? Uh, are they you know, accessing environments in a way that may violate uh, PCI requirements? And then for your own system administrators, how are they interacting with the infrastructure as a service environment? As opposed to in a traditional data center environment, you had the security, op I mean the IT operations teams, there was really only one set of folks that were interacting. It was a very sort of fixed process, relatively slow process. Given that infrastructure as service, both public and private, very highly interactive, very self-service oriented. There's a ton of new data, ton of new information, ton of new potential points of vulnerability and risk that need to be monitored and assessed around this. And Carson, if I may just uh, chime in on this last point, um, it frequently sort of goes unnoticed, but uh, you know it's important to know that a lot of these data sets now in these sort of uh, co-owned environments are not even in your control, even though you know it's your admins making changes to your own infrastructure in the cloud that data may be owned by your cloud provider and getting to that data is critical to your PCI compliance but it is it's a different way of getting to the data than it was when you were talking to your operating system or your active directory on premise right so so being able to tap into these data streams is different now than it was before uh, yet it's possible and available and, and uh, typically you will need a different set of tools to get to that data set. Great points, Bruno. Thank you. So moving ahead, uh, this is a little bit of a visual representation of the old and the new and, and how this rate of change and, and change in control uh, construct uh, really, really impacts security. This really brings it home. This is an older environment, traditional environment. Uh, you know, looks a lot like uh, 10 years ago, there was VMware, there was some, you know, a couple of virtualization stacks, uh, you know, traditional hardware environments, everything was behind four walls in the data center, everything was behind the firewall, very simple model, very low rate of change. Really what's changed in the last couple of years, and this change has happened incredibly quickly, virtualization, we'll start with just inside the, the data center, uh, virtualization and orchestration tools like Chef and Puppet uh, and Cloud Stacks like uh, Cloud Stack itself and OpenStack, uh, VMware vCloud have created multiple new environments. So now instead of a few environments to deal with security and compliance around, there are multiple environments to deal with. And the orchestration tools themselves have created a very high rate of change. So. Software has always been obviously uh, relatively quick to move. You know, agile development made software move much more quickly. Now the same type of effect is happening with infrastructure with the advent of software-defined data centers, software-defined infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, orchestrated infrastructure. There are many different names for it, but from a security team's perspective, the effect is the same. There's new complexity. The rate of change is much higher, and it's much, much more difficult to keep your arms around these environments as they change and move in these highly automated ways. Then we start to introduce public cloud environments into the mix. This becomes even more complex because not only do you have environments that you don't completely own, your organization doesn't own the hardware, doesn't own the physical environment, uh, you've also got assets that the, the existing perimeter tools can't reach, they can't affect them. Right? You, you, you can't use your checkpoint firewall, for example, uh, to protect your perimeter firewall to protect some application that's scattered across cloud providers, multiple regions, um, in multiple places. You can't take a hardware appliance and ship it out to a public cloud provider and say, plug this in. It's not the way that public cloud environments, true software-defined clouds work. So this becomes uh, very problematic in that the rate of change goes even higher because in many cases you have business units and, and business unit IT teams that are using these environments, even less control, not necessarily wired into central IT, uh, and the tools that you've relied on for years and have built around don't work. The other problem with public cloud environments is where we have very good security at perimeters for inside the data center, uh, APTs and internal threats aside, uh, you, doubt, you have a clear situation here where those trusted known perimeter capabilities do nothing at all uh, for things that are outside your data center. So this really creates a, a complexity for security teams. And as I mentioned before, agile software development further increases that rate of change. So this is really the struggle that security organizations have. 
an example of this with Cloud Passages PCI audit when we went through our PCI audit, and we're a relatively small company. We're not a huge, huge, uh, you know, multinational corporation. We had over 12 and a half million individual data points that came into play for our PCI audit. Now, Cloud Passage is a 100% cloud-based company. We have literally one piece of hardware, and that is the uh, the router in our office that goes to the internet. Everything else is 100% in the cloud. Uh, so we're sort of the poster child for this whole idea of PCI in the cloud. When we looked at the amount of infrastructure data, given the amount of change that happens uh, in our infrastructure environment, assuring an initial compliance state and then assuring the ongoing compliance state, uh, there were a total of about uh, seven, seven and, and three quarter million uh, infrastructure and code data points. And then as we looked at how things changed over time, particularly with agile software development and we're doing code releases every two weeks, uh, really it was interesting to see it flip on its head. The infrastructure still changed a significant amount, but really the code became the thing that, that was problematic and, and something that we had to get on top of in terms of the amount of change and verifying the changes didn't create a PCI compliance issue. And then outside of the you know, initial and ongoing compliance for the code and the infrastructure, <clears throat> the other component is access management and behaviors. This was a huge piece of, uh, a piece of work uh, that we worked to, to automate uh, to a very deep degree and collected uh, tens of thousands of access control uh, and, and access behavior points. So people that are accessing systems, accessing a certain piece of code, accessing a certain uh, you know, piece of the stack for our application. So the point here again is that as the in, these environments change more, the, the amount of change that happens in a given period of time goes way up. The amount of data grows even more quickly. It grows exponentially. So the other key thing to think about is who is responsible for PCI in these cloud environments? And the answer is you are. It's a shared responsibility. Uh, this is something for public cloud providers that's really become the norm. This is something that Amazon coined, uh, the shared responsibility model and the basic idea here is that the provider is going to deal with security for their shared environment, for the environment that you share with multiple other customers. Once they hand you <clears throat> your virtual machine, it's up to you from there to add the security that you need within your guest virtual machine at the operating system level, at the application level, uh, for the code, for the data, to make that virtual environment PCI compliant. <clears throat> so this is a very important thing to keep in mind, and you can go take a look at uh, the AWS white paper on security, uh, they outline this very, very clearly, but it's not just AWS, it's every public cloud provider that really has adopted the shared responsibility model. So there is a huge component of this that you are responsible for. Uh, if you have the idea that the cloud provider is going to do your PCI compliance for you, uh, think again. There's, there's a lot of work that you have to do yourself. So you've got a few options. One is to stick your head in the sand, ignore the problem, keep your fingers crossed, and uh, hope you don't turn into a, a front page compromise or start to get fined. Uh, the second option to deal with this very large scale, is hire a small army of people. Uh, very few security organizations that I'm aware of are being told, hey, we're going to the cloud, here's 100 new people to deal with it. Uh, that never happens. Uh, the third option that, that we believe strongly and obviously is to automate your security and compliance with solutions that were built for cloud environments, their native cloud security uh, functionality, and they're able to scale and be dynamic uh, with the cloud. So with that, we're going to move into uh, the, the joint solution overview uh, between Sumo Logic and Cloud Passage, talk to you about uh, how these environments work together to provide you with a very, very rapidly deployable, uh, very easy to manage, very scalable in multiple ways, solution to get your PCI environments achieved. So Bruno and I will both talk a bit about this, what you're looking for in a solution. Uh, on the left side, really the way to think about this joint solution is that Cloud Passage brings the control environment and the telemetry to the table. And the things you're going to want to look for in that kind of a solution, our piece of the solution, if you will, you're going to want something that's portable meaning that it works in any cloud environment. You don't want to be locked in. You want it to be built directly into the stack itself, meaning that when your developers or when your infrastructure teams deploy these virtual machines in cloud environments, 
the security is simply present, and you want automated control management for many, many uh, controls. You want to consolidate as many controls as you can. Uh, you don't really have time with this added new rate of change to deal with 10 different products to do 10 different control functions. So to the extent you can consolidate your controls into a single management capability, uh, you're going to gain a, a tremendous amount of leverage and benefit there. The efficiency of the control deployments is also very important. We talked about it being built directly in. You want a control capability that can detect changes and react to changes on its own. You don't want a situation, for example, with, with some traditional endpoint security solution where you have to manually go and make a change when environments change. You want it something that can actually change for you and can keep your environment automatically uh, in a configuration state and then log and record that these, these changes happen. Integrations for all the key uh, things that you've built operations around, very, very important. And that's one thing Bruno's going to talk about in a few minutes is the way that these two products integrate. And you're going to want something that's scalable. So you need something that you can deploy rapidly. Uh, you don't want to deploy a bunch of hardware yourself to put your security solution on top of. <clears throat> you're not going to have a ton of time to do that. You want something that, that has a low impact on the system. That's even more important in an environment where you're, you're operating in a public cloud because you can't really afford to, to give away a ton of memory, a ton of CPU compute power to a security solution. And you want something that is very transparent in the way it scales. You don't want to have to think about, do I need to add more virtual appliances? You don't want need to think about, do I need more licenses? You want something that when your organization scales up its application, scales down the applications, they have this variability due to seasonality or whatever, the security just comes along for the ride. And then finally, you want metered usage and billing. This is very important for companies, especially earlier stage companies, that are starting out and they may not be prepared to dedicate $10 million to hardware, uh, they're going to be using cloud because they want to ramp up. If you're going to be ramping up your infrastructure, you want a solution for security that also lets you ramp and pay as you go. So you don't have to pay a huge amount of money up front for a security solution. You can start small, let the security grow with your business. Uh, that's, a very, that, that's not just technical scale, that's also economic scale. So these are sort of the components that uh, come into play for the control and telemetry side of things. And Bruno, if you wouldn't mind uh, picking up on your side, that'd be great. Sure. So from the monitoring and validation uh, side of things, uh, similar set of things are important. I'll just talk a little bit more specifically about monitoring and validation. Uh, so first of all, it's flexible collection. Monitoring the changes and activity in your cloud environment requires a different collection methodology than you would in your sort of fixed infrastructure on-prem environment. So your collection needs to be aware and capable of dealing with the ephemeral nature of the cloud. You probably are going to the cloud because you can expand and contract the footprint that you're leveraging for your apps, and you want, you know, you want to be able to collect from nodes that constantly disappear and reappear without having to have you know, hard wires into those nodes collect data. You want to be able to deploy these collection collectors, agents, whatever you call want to call them, um, using the modern deployment tools like Chef, Puppet, others, and, and you know, uh, provided by your cloud provider uh, tools. Uh, you need to be able to collect from data sources that are not necessarily found in your data center today. Data sources like the S3 uh, from AWS, where, you know, uh, uh, big chunk of the cloud data is stored today. Your CDNs like Akamai um, uh, and your audit data from all of your infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or, or uh, software as a service vendors. You need to have a flexible and rapid deployment methodology. You can't spend weeks or months building out your specific PCI compliance dashboards and reports, right? So you, have, you want to have a solution that comes out of the box with all of the bells and whistles, all of the reports and charts and searches and alerts uh, that will help you keep that compliance and maintain that compliance. You don't want any hardware uh, or software or storage deployment. You, this needs to be fast and, and it needs to be flexible. Um, and also you want it to be uh, able to not only collect from your cloud environment, because a lot of businesses out there have both the cloud footprint as well as an sort of internal data center footprint or even a retail footprint. Um, and then finally, on the, the scalability and big data, 
you know, apps today generate tremendous amounts of data. This data is doubling every couple of years. Um, and being able to scale um, and analyze this in real time so that you are on top of um, your alerts and changes that, that could put you out of compliance, you need to be able to have a scalable solution that will be able to crunch through that data and, and give you insights in real time. Um, you really want to be supporting your bursting and seasonal spikes. So lots of retailers have 10 times more data in, during the holiday season than they have during the other 10 months of the year. And you don't want to spend, you know, provision your uh, infrastructure for the, for the peak, for the, for the two months of the year when you need it, and run it idle across the entire rest of the year. You want to essentially be able to pay for what you use and let the solution scale on its own. Um, and you also want to be able to unstructure highly custom logs and, and data that is coming from these new tools in the cloud, custom apps that you're deploying, the vendors are deploying and changing on your behalf so that you don't have to be locked into your classic Cisco ASA, you know, firewall log and, and, and uh, the Windows firewall or the Windows logs, right? So you need to be able to handle all kinds of different formats of data and analyze them. Analyze it on the cloud. So, Carson, back over to you. Thanks, Bruno. So, I'm going to talk a, a couple slides about Halo. Uh, that's the Cloud Passage uh, Security Automation Platform and what it does. And uh, then Bruno will talk about uh, the Sumo Logic solution and how the two integrate uh, to give you a, a very complete end-to-end uh, -end closed loop security solution for PCI compliance. So, so when we say closed loop and end-to-end, and -end, one of the components that is involved in a solution like that is actual control deployment and control automation, control orchestration. And that's really what Halo is built to do. So we are a security automation platform uh, built and delivered by Cloud Passage that secures cloud workloads, whether they be for applications, uh, for big data, whatever the case may be, in any cloud environment public, private, or hybrid at any scale, and we deliver this as a service. So much like Sumo Logic, uh, we deliver this security as a service so that you don't have to build this capability yourself. You don't need to buy hardware to deploy it. You don't need to manage that hardware. It's something you simply subscribe to, uh, deploy a small piece of instrumentation, and you're done. So you see the functions on the left. Uh, won't go through a ton of detail uh, for each one of those. Plenty of information available on the website about each one of the functions that we do, but you see that there are many functions that we handle. So this comes back to the consolidation issue that I discussed. Uh, this is also an automated deployment model, which I'll touch on in the next slide. Uh, this capability gives you very broad compliance support. Uh, for PCI specifically, Cloud Passage Halo covers about 75% of the technical requirements uh, for PCI DSS. So with one solution, it gives you a very, very broad set of capabilities, and it takes care of a very broad swath of PCI requirements. And as I mentioned, it is, as a service, very easy to deploy. Typically, companies can get this up and running uh, within a matter of hours, quite literally. Uh, we did a webinar with uh, GigaOM and Citrix ShareFile uh, a while back. That, that webinar is archived in which uh, the, the ShareFile team talked about the ability to get all of their HIPAA, which is a different security standard but similar to PCI, get all of their HIPAA controls out, up, ready to go in 10 days. So very, very fast to deploy as compared to months. The way that Halo actually works, uh, you can see the customer data center on the right side. Uh, this could be a public cloud, could be a private cloud, could be a mix, right? This is a very simplified view. Uh, there's a very, very small microagent. It's about six megabytes in memory. It's tiny. It takes up less than one half of one percent of CPU. That interacts with the Halo security automation platform that itself is built in the cloud. We built this solution on top of a big data and cloud computing environment, so that we ourselves could be elastic in terms of having the compute capability and the scalability to handle uh, the elastic nature of our customers' needs. So these Halo uh, agents communicate on a 60-second basis with this environment. This, in, this uh, security automation platform monitors all of your systems within a 60-second window, analyzes their situation in real time, uh, threat situation, configuration state, changes that have occurred, and will either issue commands back out to these different systems to make needed modifications like firewall rule changes, uh, account changes to system accounts, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, 
and also generates the telemetry data, the information about compliance, about configuration, about user behaviors, about changes to the system that you need to track in order to maintain PCI compliance. This is also the data collection that you need to be able to show auditors that you are tracking and you are monitoring and you do have the ability to manage this change. So in doing this, Halo really gives you the first half of, of the closed loop model in that we deploy the control in, uh, for you, we monitor the control, we monitor the changes, and we provide that data to you in a way that, can, that can be consumed by analytics tools like Sumo Logic. So that's a really high level on, on Halo and what it does. I'll pass it over to Bruno now to talk about how Sumo Logic completes the formula for PCI compliance. Thanks, Carson. <clears throat> so Sumo Logic is essentially a machine data intelligence service. Uh, we like Cloud Passage, our software as a service model. We're built on, on the cloud with uh, deploying a big data architecture so that we can internally scale and provide uh, our customers essentially a seamless scalability across no matter what data set that they have. What we do sort of in, in sort of a macro, macro view, what Sumo Logic does, it allows you to collect any data from any platform, no matter what structure that data comes from. And this, this could be your operating system logs, your virtualization logs, your infrastructure as a service provider data, logs, access to say S3 buckets in your Amazon account, uh, or your audit data from, from AWS, as well as all of the custom application logs, you know, mobile device logs, whatever it is that, that where, you're, where, you're, where you have your workloads, we can collect the data and the activity from that. We have a highly scalable um, uh, data store that allows us to run analysis and ingest massive amounts of data and handle spikes and, and, and seasonality very effectively. And we have a patent, patent and analytics engine that allows you to both interactively analyze the data as well as uh, a machine learning technology that essentially monitors the entire data stream for you in real time to detect important events, changes, anomalies, errors, and, and security problems. And basically, uh, that it can alert you in real time that something's changed that your operators or your administrators need to look at uh, that may be relevant to your compliance regulation or to your operational availability. Uh, and, that, and then on top of all of that, we provide um, Sumo Logic apps. Uh, PCI uh, is uh, one of the apps that we provide, uh, which, which comes and covers all of the regulations, all of the requirements uh, within the PCI 2.0 um, uh, framework. Uh, besides that, we have 30 or 40 other apps which you can find on our website um, if you're interested to learn more. Next slide, please. The way that the deployment model works, it's, it's very similar to the Cloud Passage model. You know, the entire Sumo Logic platform and the analytics engine, the storage, all of that is run by us in our cloud. It's delivered to you as software as a service through a, through a very simple, you know, web interface uh, where you do all of your interaction with the data. You, in order to get the data to Sumo Logic, you install a similar micro agent as the Carson described, uh, the Cloud Passage. Uh, agents, which can be either collecting from each machine by running natively on that machine or on that on that virtual machine or node in the cloud, or it can actually do you know, collect from hundreds of devices remotely without even having to run on the machine. Um, and in many cases, uh, there are data sets that you need to collect that are not actually uh, where you don't actually control the hard disk and don't run on the machine or can't run on the machine. Such as platform as a service or in you know in the CDN where you, your data is flowing through things like the, uh, the Akamai network, we also have the ability to collect data um, uh, through an HTTP data stream through which you can post directly to Sumo without actually installing any, anything on any of those machines. Okay. Next slide, please. So when you combine the two solutions, a Cloud Passage um, telemetry and, and control solution and the Sumo Logic uh, monitoring and validation solution, you essentially get a 360 degree uh, solution for your PCI environment. So in the complex world of, of your you know, on-prem data centers you know, and, and the private clouds, uh, we can deploy uh, both the controls and telemetry mechanism as well as the monitoring and, and real-time data collection to monitor the activity and the changes in that environment. Uh, we can do the same across your public cloud 
uh, uh, deployments as well as CDNs and others. The data is collected in real time, analyzed uh, for, for controlled telemetry in cloud passage and for monitoring and validation in Sumo Logic. Sumo Logic also stores all of your data for as long as you want. So in, in terms of, in case of PCI, typically it's 12 to 13 months, uh, depending on a customer. And ultimately, our solutions are also integrated on the back end so that you, we can close this loop. So if, for example, uh, Sumo Logic detects an activity or a change or, or say, a machine, internal uh, machine in the PCI network segment is starting to talk to uh, machines out on the internet uh, on a protocol that's suspicious. We can actually, once we detect that, uh, we can actually call the API on Cloud Passage and actually shut down that activity automatically just by detecting this change in real time without any human interaction. So you not only get the alert that something's going on, but you can actually remediate in real time to close the loop and maintain compliance actively rather than reactively. And with that, with those two, then once you combine these two, if you could go to the next slide, Carson, please. Um, you get an extensive coverage of, of uh, a PCI uh, regulation, right? So, you know, across the six milestones, six milestones uh, with Sumo Logic and, and Cloud Passage, uh, you get full coverage from, of milestones two to six. Uh, which, you know, I'm not going to read through all these. We will provide some of this input to the audience uh, uh, afterwards. But uh, the, the only, only the first milestone, which is typically, you know, um, uh, owned by the customer themselves to, to main, ensure the limited data retention. But other than that, uh, you get full coverage of, of the PCI DSS milestones. Um, and you can, you can deploy all of that. If you go to the next slide, Carson. In very limited, in very short amount of time, just like Carson mentioned earlier, that you can deploy cloud passage in hours. The same is the same is the case with Sumo Logic. We have many, many of our customers that deploy either over the phone or completely in self-service mode. Um, and the two solutions uh, allow you to, you know, instantly provision accounts. There are, you don't have to install hardware or software or, or download, you know, software packages to, to set up the environment. Uh, both solutions come with out-of-the-box specific PCI specific content, all the way from controls to reports to dashboards and alerts. Um, the, the collection agents support the cloud deployment model. Like I said earlier, you can, they can be deployed in scripted mode, work with the new tools, work with the ephem ephemeral environment, um, and we support the bursting and seasonality, so you never have to wire up new infrastructure, change your architecture of your, of your PCI our control solution, you can simply send more data and everything works as, as it was designed. So that sort of finishes the off the slides. Um, I'll turn it back over to Carson. Um, here's how you can learn more. Um, please uh, go to the to these websites and, and uh, read more and you know stay tuned for uh, additional security and compliance webinars that are coming from uh, both of our companies. Mm -hmm. And the three things here, uh, the Cloud Passage PCI Compliance Kit uh, contains uh, lots of information about cloud security compliance and PCI in general. Uh, there's there's uh, matrices of coverage, very specifically detailed matrices of coverage uh, that you can latch on to, uh, deployment guides, sort of blow-by-blow -blow deployment guides to achieve PCI in the cloud with Halo. Uh, also looking at the Sumo Logic technical brief, there's lots of resources there as well. And then if you are interested in more information about the cloud passage and Sumo Logic integration, uh, that blog post that you see on the screen, and we will make this available uh, to the audience, it sort of runs down the details of how you do the integration, uh, which is very quick and very seamless to do in order to get this functionality that closes the loop, as it were, uh, so that Halo is able to provide control and telemetry and Sumo Logic is able to provide you with intelligence and visibility, uh, and, and again, feeding back into control environment. So with that, Sheila, uh, I'll turn it back to you. I'm sure that there are questions that are out there. Okay, great. Thank you, Bruno and Carson. Now we'll get to some of your questions. If you still have some, go ahead and type them into the questions panel, and we will try to answer them. And if not, we will definitely follow up with you after the webinar. So this first question uh, goes to both of you. I guess I'll start with Carson, and then Bruno, maybe you can chime in. 
How do organizations typically handle remediation once they find out um, that they have PCO, PCI holes and So, so remediating where there are deficiencies in PCI, uh, it really depends on the deficiency. Uh, so so that typically what, what you'll find is there's some control deficiency in access control, uh, access management, it might be firewall rules, it, it, it could be a number of different things. Uh, typically what we find is that organizations will look for you know, either a product or a solution uh, to try to address that. Typically it won't be just one or two things, that, especially the first initial pass of uh, compliance uh, testing that you go through with an audit, you're going to have a large number of things that need to be remediated. And the best strategy there is to, to consolidate those things, run it as a project, don't try to simply react to it. Uh, in many cases, what works really well is to have a PCI auditor come in and do a pre-audit for you, which is not as expensive as the full audit. Find out where the deficiencies are uh, and then look for solutions that can handle as many of those as possible in one cut. Uh, one of the reasons that, that Halo is popular is because we're able to deal with so many pieces of compliance in one shot uh, as opposed to doing it piecemeal. Uh, so, but in terms of how to address it, uh, do it as a project. Uh, Pre-audits are a great idea, great way to help you figure out uh, what you need to, to go back and clean up before the real live audit. So I'll chime in on that as well. So from, from our side, what we see um, in monitoring and validating compliance, you know, it really runs a gamut. Yeah, you know, lots of people will respond, and again, it depends on an issue in a manual fashion, where they will, you know, after we detect a non-compliance event, they will, you know, deploy their their staff to 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 remediate against those. Um, frequently, they will instead of just simply reacting to an alert, they will actually use Sumo Logic to integrate to their workflow systems or ticketing systems like ServiceNow and others. Uh, to actually trigger an appropriate response, routed to the appropriate team that is in charge of a typical of, of a problem that we detected, and we can detect where the problem lies, and and then that can be used in routing the tickets to the appropriate teams. And then, in you know, in more advanced cases, like I mentioned earlier, some of these can be done uh, in an automated fashion, and with Cloud Passage and Sumo Logic and Picture, uh, you can actually remediate against some of these issues in real time um, and automatically. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and this is another question that goes to both of you, and Bruno, maybe you could start, and Carson, if you have anything to add. From your experience, what are the most common issues that organizations overlook from a PCI compliance perspective as they transition to a cloud environment? Well, one of the biggest ones um, that, um, that comes to mind is that you know, when they transition from an on-premise environment to a cloud environment, whether that's driven by you know, cost savings you get or agility and flexibility that you get out of the cloud environment and so on, or the reach that they provide, um, many benefits of the cloud, they typically uh, get themselves into trouble with, with ignoring the rate of change. These, these flexible environments, like, like, in the, like in the cloud, actually enable your development teams and operations teams to operate in a very different mode, which is part of the benefit of the cloud. And uh, the challenge that they run into is that they don't actually uh, account for all the changes and how those changes will impact their daily and weekly and monthly and quarterly compliance reviews and compliance posture. So uh, they forget about the proactive compliance management and continue to rely on the sort of the classic, once the auditor comes in, we will pull up the data sets and we'll show it, show it to them, assuming a uh, few changes have happened. Um, with move to the cloud, you have to really proactively manage your compliance in real time, monitor those changes, how they impact, and then close the loop on those changes if, if uh, they threaten your compliance posture. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think I think rate of change is what takes people off guard. Uh, I think it's, um, you know, especially organizations that have done PCI in a much more static environment. Uh, with cloud environments, particularly organizations that are doing uh, you know cloud applications multiple business units that may have PCI requirements uh, that's a really really big deal uh, the other thing I think people miss the ball on sometimes or they don't think about is uh, understanding where your PCI data actually is and um, you know so, so with cloud environments uh, because it's so easy to literally make a copy of an entire server data and all um, it, it's very, very easy for data to start to get out of control, and it starts to replicate 
uh, and you end up with this sort of, that we call it the triple problem, where you've got all these different copies of your data that's floating around out there. If you don't have visibility and control into how those systems are being replicated, where they're coming up, who's doing what with them, uh, suddenly you may find that um, in many cases, unfortunately, you may even be PCI compliant and because you don't even realize that there are other systems out there with uh, cardholder data, uh, one of those gets compromised, uh, suddenly you've got a compromise on your hands and you may not have even realized that uh, that, that existed and neither did the auditors. So this idea that things can be done in the self-service way, uh, you know, tracking that, being able to really keep a close on, that's very important. I'll, I'll, I'll chime back in on this one, actually. It's a really great point, Carson. I'll also say where your data lives, right? And so uh, moving infrastructure around and creating that is one, is one point. The other point is also um, the data about your admin activity. For example, for requirement 10 in PCI, where you need to monitor admin, admin activity uh, or requirement 1 and 2, where you're monitoring changes to the network and access to the network uh, uh, for the PCI segment. You know, if you run in Amazon, for example, you know, your admins make changes, but that, those changes are not recorded anywhere that's accessible to you unless you are consuming the, the actually a new product from Amazon called the Cloud Trail, uh, which provides you with the feed of that data, right? So it's really important that when you move to the cloud that you account for all of the changes and visibility you had on on-prem and then acquire those data streams that are available. They're just not sort of obviously available sometimes because it's a whole new mo model for deploying software and product. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'd like to kind of switch gears and uh, there's a question from the attendee. The hack on target shows a lack in security but they're, they are PCI compliant. Does this diminish the value of PCI compliance? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that one, Sheila. Um, so so the, the short answer is no, it doesn't. Uh, I think the, the, the important thing to understand is what is the value of a compliance standard. And compliance does not equal security. And, and people often get those two things sort of mixed up. Compliance is intended to drive certain behaviors, certain minimum behaviors, and in doing so, uh, it, you know, can, can help companies or drive companies to deal with a, a very large number of compromises. But being compliant with PCI or HIPAA or any other standard does not make you secure, right? So there's, there's more above and beyond the minimum that you need to do to really truly protect yourself deeply, uh, particularly with very advanced attacks uh, like the, the target attack, as we learn more about it, uh, appears to be quite a sophisticated attack. That's not something that an industry minimum is going to be able to protect against. So I think the key thing is to not try to blend security with compliance. In many environments, the, 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 the converse applies. You can be very, very secure, but you may not have the you know, policy and procedure and, and sort of the, the components that are really more around managing uh, the technical parts of security. Uh, and, and therefore, you can be very secure, but not compliant. So the two are not you know, tied closely together. They're related, but they are different things, and they need to be treated differently. So don't look at PCI as a threat protection strategy. Uh, it's, it's not really what it's intended to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that as well. You know, and again, this is part of the reason why, you know, the check, quote unquote checkbox compliance is, is, a, is a trap, right? It's a trap. It's, it's all it does. It allows you to, to, uh, to do business, right? But it does not uh, take you off the list of being um, in danger of being on the front page of the Wall Street Journal like Target. And, you know, these solutions uh, like Cloud Passage and Sumo Logic, you know, go far beyond, especially when combined, go far beyond the checkbox compliant um, and try to give you a proactive uh, compliance management with, with a slew of other tools that allow you to bolster your security and ensure uh, that you are not in front of uh, in front of the audiences like uh, the business community looking at you for uh, the breaches and the leaks that you've caused to your customers. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, this comes from another attendee. Could you walk us through, and maybe Bruno you can start with this because it's asking about both solutions. Could you walk us through how your tools would be used during or in an audit? For example, would, would an auditor interact directly with you? 
Sure. Um, so I'll start from from our end because you know we are we we are used heavily to to automate the compliance audits. So Sumo Logic as a tool is essentially a data management tool which will collect your entire data stream, data set of the activity changes, feeds from Halo and others. So in one place you will have all of the data relevant and required to prove to your auditor that you're both reviewing your logs, that you have the controls in place, that they're operating, um, and that you can actually provide reports to your auditors that the, all of the things that I just mentioned are true. So Sumo Logic, uh, besides giving you the ability to monitor in real time, react to changes and things like that, it also stores all of this data and can provide you with a click of a button a full report of say six months ago during the uh, you know during the months of May and June, uh, give me all of your all all of the failed logins um, on your uh, personal account number systems right, which is a very classic PCI auditor re requirement and request, and you need to be able to quickly uh, pull out the report for the specified time frame and to prove to your auditor that both you have the data, you're monitoring it, and that you are able to review it um, uh, on a regular scheduled basis. So that's Sumo Logic would actually be an integral part of that, and you would actually interact with Sumo Logic both in a scheduled and an interactive form uh, as you're responding to your auditor's requests. Okay, thank you. And Carson, yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll follow up uh, with that as well. Yeah, the the, uh, the so the, to the point of auditors interacting with the tools, definitely no question about it. Uh, one of the use cases for Halo is uh, for Cloud Pass Halo is collecting the data needed to demonstrate compliance. Uh, so we've got a number of QSAs that have already written uh, integration scripts against our APIs to pull data out. To, to essentially, you know, they've learned the data model within Halo to pull data out about configurations and current state of users and so forth and so on to be able to grab that snapshot very very quickly where before. They would sit with someone and say, "Okay, now open up a terminal and show me that, uh, you know, show, open this file and show me how this is configured and, and show me this process running." Now they can just grab that data straight from Halo, and so that's been a that's been a very big win uh, in terms of saving money, not just in terms of getting ready for an audit or becoming compliant, but in terms of saving money for actual audit process itself, because a big, big, big part. Uh, of audit costs is data collection. Uh, so, so when that capability then is combined with Sumo, and you're able to have auditor reports that are tied off to Halo that show the configuration, show all the changes that happened, show right down to the exact second when something was modified, that's a very, very powerful combination. Um, and so we, we do interact with auditors uh, very, very regularly. Uh, and we do also give customers advice in some cases on how they should remediate things. Because uh, we've been through this ourselves, and, and we do a lot of PCI compliance work with customers that are deploying apps in the cloud. Okay, great. Thank you. I think we've got time for uh, probably two more. Um, I think this question is directed as br at Bruno. Uh, does this solution also give prompts for failures and non-compliances for audit purposes? Yes, and um, if I understood the question correctly, the Sumo Logic solution does actually allow you to, instead of like classic uh, solutions that, that are most of the solutions that are available today, which only give you the ability to sort of look back when asked what happened, uh, Sumo Logic provides you with a proactive compliance management solution that provides you with real-time views into your posture, overall security or, or compliance PCI compliance posture. It will, it, will, it will turn uh, lights from green to yellow to, to red as, as events coming in real time. It actually gives you a require, requirement specific from requirement 1 to requirement 11, uh, detailed views in real time into what events are uh, causing you to be out of compliance, where they're coming from, who the actors are, what devices they're happening on, what's the traffic. Uh, what are the changes that are happening? So it does actually give you the ability not only to report, but also to proactively monitor, get alerted, and actually, in many cases, when, with, with Cloud Passage, actually remediate against some of those events that are detected in near real time. So, so the answer is yes. 
Yeah, and, and from the cloud passage side, uh, the answer is yes. We do give very sort of, we, we sort of take it a level deeper. Uh, and for, let's take configuration management, for example, or configuration monitoring. Uh, we have policies that are templated policies for, uh, you know, p uh, running a, an Apache server on CentOS uh, for PCI. And so we've mapped uh, using a variety of frameworks, both the CSA frameworks, UCF frameworks. We've mapped specific detailed controls uh, that we monitor, we deploy, and so forth back to the standards so that, uh, for example, if, if we find that um, a, a security uh, password database, for example, Etsy password in a Unix environment, is actually insecurely configured, meaning that it, it has uh, too much, too many permissions set on it, too many people could potentially change it. We'll detect that, we'll not only say, you know, you need to modify the, the file permissions on this file, but we'll tell you what we believe they should be. We'll make a suggestion to you. Uh, or we found these processes running that are that are typically not considered to be safe processes, and, and we think that's going to violate PCI for these reasons. So we take it down to a, a deeper level of granularity. That's really more valuable in the process of getting your environment uh, secure up front uh, as opposed to the ongoing. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, and this is the last question, and uh, this is specifically around the HALO solution. Uh, can you comment on, or do you have any data on the performance impact of the Halo solution on protected servers? Yeah, sure. So, so the, that question comes up a lot, and it typically has to do with concerns uh, about performance that people have learned uh, from endpoint security solutions. So uh, I'll answer that by just doing a quick compare and contrast. Um, typical endpoint security solutions are, you know, 100, 150, sometimes 200 megabyte agents that run in memory, they consume an enormous amount of memory, and they'll consume, you know, between 5 and 25 percent of the system CPU, uh, you know, in, in for, for idling and or doing specific functions. When you were in data centers and there was plenty of extra capacity on servers, you could get away with that. In cloud environments where you're optimizing uh, to CPU, you can't really do that. So we designed Halo from the beginning to use a centralized analytics engine that offloads 95, 98% of the actual compute power, which means that the, the agent on the virtual machines that we're protecting or the physical servers we're protecting uh, only consumes, you know, one half to 1% uh, of the CPU, even when it's actually doing things. So uh, also very small in memory, about six megs. So the impact is very, very light. Uh, and there's a ton more detail on that uh, around our website and our blog site if you want to take a further look. Okay, great. I think that concludes uh, the Q&A portion. Uh, thank you, Bruno and Carson, for joining us. And uh, I will be following up with everybody tomorrow with the recording and answers to the questions that everybody asked um, in case we didn't get to yours today. And uh, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.